We're back for more Versus Live, where we throw all the Faithful Saluting decks against all... Well, not all, but most of the Faithful Saluting decks versus most of the Ancient Starting decks. There are a lot of each, that's true. So it's a battle between two of the most powerful cards in the format so far. Ancient Starting's up one to nothing. Kind of. It didn't feel like I should be winning. I, my deck wasn't really doing a whole lot. But neither was mine. You just didn't evaluate the game properly in the second game. Like, I never felt good about it. And then you uh, just found one of your cards in time. Uh, yeah, if you missed for one sure. more turn, you were dead. Yeah. It just came down to whether or not you found it in time, and you did. That's fair. I mean, I did make two giant... Uh, I mean, I also turned one uh, hardened skills all three games. Yeah. Um, game three, I peeled the second hardened skills to make giant walking ballistas, and you also... Well, game three, I four, four, so... Yeah, Mulligan that, four. We, we don't need to talk about game three. Count. Uh, that one what, didn't but what are we playing today or right now? Now we've got uh, another. So Todd's always going to be on the stirring side of things. I'll be on the looting side of things. Well, Todd, obviously, yes. Todd is playing a deck that I played last week. This is Will Pulliam's Amulet Titan list, uh, winning list from SCG Charlotte a couple weeks ago. Amulet Titan, a deck that has recently uh, arisen because it's good against Dredge and good against control decks. Mm -hmm. uh, the people that play it like to uh, half-jokingly claim that it has no bad matchups. I don't think they're joking. That is not true. The Infect matchup and the Storm matchups are not good. Well, what if you tutor for Batman? Mm. <laughs> Sometimes, like, your Walking Ballistas and EE can, like, do work against Infect, but you need them to do work real fast. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think that um, unless you just decide to play some weirdo version that plays, like, full Walking Ballistas... Uh, and some dismembers or something yeah. like it, you're going to be worse than Tron is against them, which I, is impressive. I did play uh, Amulet in a league this week, and I did defeat Infect, but my opponent punted a game to me, and it was a three game match. Happens. So I was glad to accept that punt. I got obliterated by Storm. You also got uh, obliterated by uh, with a blue eye control. I I won that game. Hey, yeah, you won that game. Yeah, yeah, I with won that four game. Four minutes left on your clock. It you was won fifty five seconds. One. You won game it was one. 55 seconds left. And I won. If we were playing in real life, there would probably be four minutes on the clock, and I'd win no, the match. You would have been disqualified for stalling. <laughs> no. Yes. There was no stalling. Uh, I cast spells, and he killed everything I played the entire game until a walk ballista killed him. Just stop being a time thief. Just stop being a time thief. That's all you have to do. Hey, amulet is hard. Okay, let's see how well, let's see how well you oh, handle. I'm going to butcher it. Yeah. butcher. <laughs> Seems like a good uh, clock spinning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to be playing today. Will uh, Will Pulliams uh, and you are playing the. Uh, I'm playing Andrew Schneider's ArcLight Red yes. deck, also from SCG Charlotte. I believe he made the top 32. Check um, the deck tech. Yes, recorded with deck yours tech. truly. Exactly. Good plug, Nick. Uh, so this is the most recent Faithless Suiting deck to emerge. Obviously, we've seen Arclight Phoenix and Standard. Uh, card is also very powerful and modern, a ton of cheap spells. Mm -hmm. So this deck is sort of a quasi-burn deck, with a lot of cheap burn spells. We have Mana Morphos and some Rituals to help power out Phoenix any, as well. Any Runaway Steamkin? Then, no, this is a, uh, it's Arclight Red, so no Steamkin. I think Steamkin is pretty weak and modern. It's kind of like Dark Confidant. It's like two drop the dice to everything that you need to leave in play for a couple turns to be good. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is a version without Steamkin when the originals did. There's also an Izzet version, and uh, Andrew did top 32 the Grand Prix the following week with an Izzet version. But I wanted to try out the Mono Red. Uh, the Izzet version plays Thing in the Ice, which I think is pretty good, although oh, not great in this matchup. I love Thing in the Ice. But yeah, it. Uh, that, that's what I'm going to be playing. Pretty standard list, just uh, pl plenty of burn. We got we got some Needle uh, needle Drops as oh, a, yeah. as a our cantrip. Really? Going to Needle Drop, yeah. Really, buddy? Yep. <laughs> Modern so, playable. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. See if I want to put want to play some Arclight Phoenix maybe this week at SCG Regionals. Alright, tell you what. Uh you get to go first. <laughs> I feel bad. I won I won like seven die rolls in a row against you. So and I'm not I'm not exaggerating. I'm pretty sure I won seven in a row the last seven match against Ross. He keeps choosing odd, and I keep rolling even. I don't know. Rizal uh asks, how can I send pizza to these folks? <laughs> Send pizza? Yeah. Well, I'm not giving you my address. Uh, you could probably send, find the Star City Games Center. Google yeah, StarCityGames.com <laughs> Game Center. Say, so. just put my name on the pickup, I guess. Make yeah. sure it's paid for, because I ain't paid for it. I, I can give you the address of the Game Center. Yeah. Make I don't sure, know, this, I don't make know the sure zip code. The, make sure there's no meat on the pizza. Yeah, vegetarian here. But yeah, send it to the Star City Game Center. Just do, just do, uh, just do cheese pizza. Fine. Yeah, that's a fun cheese. Uh, t they're saying, Todd, you best not miss any Summoner's Packed triggers. <laughs> like Ross did last week. 
<laughs> I didn't miss any with that deck. I missed it with Scape Shift. It doesn't yeah. count. Carmen Ninja says, Todd, you just read your article. There was no Jeskai list for this weekend. You lied. You, I never said that there was a Jeskai list in there. Oh, they claimed that you... Uh, that you had the what are Jeskai you talking about? I, I'm just reading. Just They're reading. lying. I said I did not say Jeskai a single time. All right, my hand is weak. My hand does not seem very good either, but I'm going to try it. All right. Lava spike you. Nice. And Histea says, is this so one of these deep. matches where it's Ross on Arclight Red versus Todd and Ross on Amulet? <laughs> yes. Actually, <laughs> before we started, I said, Ross, I'm going to turn my hand face up a couple of times probably. Uh, what says I just drew a Radiant Fountain trigger? <laughs> Let's counter here. It just draws the Radiant Fountain? <laughs> Your turn. And has an amulet? Your turn. What is this? This uh, is nonsense. I can't win now. You're just going to bounce that thing three times. All right, before Ross nice goes deck. on too much of a tirade, I want to cut this off. Ross picked all the decks. This week. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I had drawn this one, had this one earlier. Um, I will play a Tormenting Voice, discarding a map. Okay. Faster. Mm. All right, so I can summoner's pack for Azusa, cast it, and but I won't be able to pay for it. So what instead I'm going to do is bounce. Float one. Oh, you're going to return that? Oh wait, no, no, no. Can I? No, I can't do it. Mm. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. So Amulet plus Azusa. It used to be with Summer Bloom. Like yeah. if, if I had Summer Bloom, this would be easy because I would just tap two Summer Bloom and then make yeah, six from Evil Titan. But yeah. with, with Azusa, Azusa it's, it's harder. You're one short, one one less mana drop. So I'm gonna just do this, and, and it costs one more. So you end up three mana short. Go. That's true. That's true. Hmm. Hmm. Your Arclight deck doesn't really seem to be Arclighting very much. Pull back to me, bro. Suspend. Oh, okay. So I take one. So you need to announce how much damage I'm taking, please. Pass the turn. It's with written your, on the card, Todd. With your, <laughs> you didn't say combat damage, and then you tapped a land when I said no blocks. You're at 18. You're right. Sorry, 20. <laughs> yet. Jerk. Just draw I'm the radiant jerk. fountain. I'm I the one the relevant scenario. card in your entire deck has it in the opening hand. Classic Todd's draft. Truck yeah. two says the fact that Ross doesn't quit his job from all the trolling he gets is actually the most impressive thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna look through my deck for a sec. So what do you I need to know? I don't know. Just uh, if there's uh, yeah. anything weird, I can uh, tutor for with my summoner's pack. We went over the entire list before we started. Okay. Your only packed targets in game one are Titan, Azusa, Scout, and Rexage. Chill. Chill. Okay. And chill. if you want to find chill. Rexage, chill. I'm okay with that. Chill. Okay? Chill. It's not a May. Just find Rexage and cast it. There. Gain two. 20. I'll just pass turn. I'm not going to find Rexage and cast it. Okay? Okay? All right, buddy. Is there a point to me dealing with this Tribe Scout? I think there is because Todd's on three mana right here. So even if he goes up, if he essentially goes up to four. I guess if he puts a, if he has two Kairus in his hand, two bounce lands, it doesn't matter. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to the uh, Prowse trigger. Was. Yes, sir. Thank you for for announcing. I don't, I don't need to know. Okay, the the good people watching need to know. Attack you for three. Wait, so how big is this one? It's a one two. Okay, all right, seventeen. It's seventeen. Needle drop. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> Uh, I discarded this <laughs> land thinking I'd find a third one in like five draw steps, and I just have drawn the most awkward series of cards in the most awkward order. There's one reason to Rift Bolt upstairs. I could have deal drop pre combat. Maybe that was wrong. All right. Any land off the top, your turn. Untaps. Oh, blue. Thanks, Ross. Uh, faithful suiting. Sure. Wish I had option deal off my deck. I would hundred percent just do that right now. Cast it. There's a phonix. Well, if he's just got needle drop, phoenix is hundred percent coming back this turn. It is not. Wow. Well then, okay. Never mind. 
Uh, <laughs> Do I want to Swift Spear plus Suspend Bolt or cast a Bedlam Reveler? Mm, I don't know. That's at 16. I've played one spell, so I'm attacking him to 12 right here. If I attack you to 11 and have three Swift Spears, I'm probably going to cast a bunch of spells next turn. I think I just use use my stuff. I think so, too. Uh, spend attack for four. I cast a Faithless Leading. Five? Yeah, sorry. They have haste. Here to you don't have to. I mean, if you want to try to block a prime time. You can go. There goes no bad matchups. Doesn't do anything. Chad's pointing out you should, were supposed to have held the bounce land and you could have cast the Titan earlier. Wow, really? Thanks, yeah. chat. Thanks, chat. The time. Okay, when this this was not a part of the equation when they said I could have held this. By the way, so you can just relaying what the chat said. No, I know, I know, I know what chat said. <laughs> okay, so I, I played this on one, and my turn two, I could play this and this, or I can do like play this. Okay, and then I can summon her back. Yeah. So if, so if you don't draw land, itself. you're one short still? Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you draw land this turn? Because it doesn't seem like you did. No. Okay. <laughs> you drew an Azuzu. An Azuzu. Okay. Uh, so, I am going to just send the Rift Bolt upstairs because the Azuzu doesn't really do anything. It's true. Bring Todd to eight. If I draw a burn spell, he is dead. Oh. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> Cast Battle Reveler. Discard Fiery Temper. Nice. Fiery Temper you. At six. You're at five. Mm, pretty sure I'm at 12 and I just took 6 damage. Uh, I do at 16. You went from 20. 16. I, I was, the I attack was for was for 4. The no, previous. It was for 3. Oh, it was for 3. Yeah, you're right. Well, you're at 6, you're still dead. Cool. Plus I draw 3 cards. I know. Suspend a Rift Bolt. Nice. Dude, your, your deck, you just did all this stuff and you still haven't gotten back, back a Phoenix. I just want to point that out. Yeah. Yeah, well, next bad. turn, I'm going to Rift Bolt, Mana Morphos, and cast an Arclight Phoenix. <laughs> That's the insurance no, policy. No, I'm going I'm to do that and, and flashback Faithless Living. Great. Still not flashback Phoenix. Well, no, that, that's three spells. I don't I Skepticism don't CCG says, remember Gataxian Probe? And I, I laugh because that card would pop up in so many decks now. Like the... Oh, yeah. Just... Arclight Phoenix? Storm would still oh, be yeah. using it. The Phoenix decks would be using it. Death Phoenix Shadow never was it. a thing with Probe, except for like the weird aggro zoo deck build. Yep. Like, in fact, would still be using such a it. such a world where that card still exists. Well, Gitax and Probe's a messed up magic card, so yeah, it's true, it's true. All right, let's take uh, I don't know, like two questions. And uh, Lamentum, I think is how this you say their name. Uh, how do you think Tron's positioned in modern? And I think it's always positioned great. <laughs> I think well, it's medium minus. I mean, it depends, right? Like if uh, if these Arclight Phoenix decks are like very burn heavy. I think that, and the, and they start coming like out in force. That's like another matchup that could be bad for Tron because Tron is traditionally kind of bad against burn decks. Um, I don't know the fact that Tron is on everyone's radar at the moment too, just because it, it's uh, you know it sometimes it dies out right, and there's like a few months where no one plays any sort of land destruction or blood moon or even like spreading seas sometimes starts cropping up as a way to to kind of tempo them out um and that's when tron becomes the most dangerous and that's when tron comes back in heavy numbers and still performs like most dangerous well. game right um right now if people are like bringing back in fact if people are just playing these like linear fast aggro decks tron starts to get worse over when when these decks start cropping up so um, you know, I I think that uh, the Amulet deck is quite good against Tron. I think that uh, red based decks with a lot of burn spells are quite good against Tron, and just linear decks in general, like Infect. So I don't know. I think Tron is okay though. B Dirk asks, why play the Arc Light Phoenix deck when graveyard decks are already getting targeted with hate from all the dredge and other cards? I mean, that game he did nothing from the graveyard except a Bedlam Reveler. That was basically unnecessary. Like he just yeah, could have cast hard cast fiery temper. Yeah, <laughs> didn't that just didn't do anything. So I mean, I think game one having a lot of graveyard related stuff is usually okay, and then you can mitigate that by sideboarding in, in a certain way. I think yeah, utilizing the graveyard is always going to be something powerful. It's going to give you an advantage in game ones, 
And then the post board games, this is a graveyard deck, kind of like Hollow One, that can pretty easily pivot away from the graveyard and still be effective. Right. Well, not pivot entirely, but like pivot enough. Yeah, I mean, it's not can, overly reliant. Like Bedlam Reveler is like easily cuttable in the deck if you think your opponent's going to lay line of the void you or whatever. Yeah. Like then you just become a Monster Swister Bolt deck that has Faithless Looting. And, and then you bring in Shrine yeah, of Burning Shrine Rage of Burning to go long. Oh, yeah. So, and Risk Factor. Yeah, also, Shrine of Burning Rage is some hot fire. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a short three minute break while we set up for sideboarding. Uh, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. All right. We are back for sideboarding here for round two. Uh, Ancient Stirrings versus Faithless Looting. I am on the Amulet uh, Primeval Titan side, and we are sideboarding in such a way that helps us fight off a multitude of things um, in a very small tight package. We have uh, the Injured Explosives and Walking Ballista coming out because these don't do anything this matchup really. Yes, he did draw three Monetary Swifters in game one, but his average casting, or like the casting cost of his threats varies pretty wildly. And one, there's one, four, and eight. <laughs> Right. There's a high variance. Uh, same with Walking Ballista. This is not really the matchup for this. Uh, Reclamation Sage. Doesn't really have any targets. Got that. And then a Ghost Quarter. You can make an argument to keep the land in, but uh, this is the worst land in the matchup, so yeah. we're going to be trimming you, this. You almost always trim your worst land. Yep. Uh, two copies of Relic of Progenitus, which can stifle uh, his graveyard-related stuff. Uh, in a pen trick, I can also just cycle it. Uh, one option at Bailoth, which we really wanted that game to two to four, and I'm a little sad that we don't have one in the main deck. Uh, instead opting for the, the Reclamation Sage. And then one Rook Darn Bowed, which is uh, kind of an auto win in a lot of spots. So. It's very good against Arclight Phoenix. Yeah. It blocks the Arclight Phoenix, makes it very difficult for you to return them. Uh, on my side, Molten Range is obviously the best card. I considered bringing in Shrine of Burning Rage, but that's generally for longer games. Yes. And the, the Amulet deck closes pretty quickly. Yes. Uh, and I'm just cutting some of the like weaker burn spells, trimming on Needle Drops. Flame Jab is a long game card when you flood, being able to use spells to recur Arclight Phoenix, and I don't think that situation is really going to come up in this matchup, so I'm cutting that as well. All right, Nicholas. What are the pros, cons, and differences between the Runaway Red variant and this version of the Arclight Red? The uh, Runaway Red, I think, is more powerful. Like, when you untap with Runaway Seamkin, the, you can just end the game, even on, on turn three. The card Runaway Seamkin works insanely well with Faithless Looting. Just yeah. the fact that you generate three mana just pairs perfectly well with the flashback um, and allows you to do some pretty degenerate things with it while also being a fairly decent-sized creature for the casting cost, you know? and uh, But it makes your deck... Slightly more vulnerable to just normal spot removal, which in against this version, having Monster Swifter as the only creature where it's like actually vulnerable to spot removal means that um, you know you're just not going to lose random games to like Jund or whatever because they drew uh, a fatal push. Yeah, so like th this version of the deck is a lot more consistently good against removal spells and, and other disruption. Like Swift Spear, one man haste creature, hard to remove that efficiently. Then you have Arclight Phoenix, which comes back, so requires exile removal, and sometimes just comes back for free. And Bedlam Reveler, which draws a bunch of cards. So I think this version is just more consistent, whereas the other version is more powerful. And I uh, I think the power level is already high enough that I want to opt for the consistency. Lol JTAC says, why did Merfolk in Modern go away when it keeps getting good cards from the new sets? And I think uh, Humans is just the... Yeah, the real it, Merfolk here. When you, when you say that Merfolk went away... <laughs> The fundamental assumption you're making is that it was here at some point. And while people registered that deck, I don't think Merfolk was ever really present in the modern metagame. That's not true. That's just not true. Uh, the, the, the few weeks leading up to uh, Pro Tour, I want to say the, the Eldrazi Winter Pro Tour. I forget, what, what was the name of the, the set? Oath, uh, of, Oath, the Oath of the Gatewatch. Oath of the Gatewatch. Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch. Uh, the week leading up to that tournament, I, I won a classic with a team or Delver deck. And I played against Merfolk four times in that tournament, including the semis and the finals. And I think that that is one reasonable spot where you could say that Merfolk was there. It was also good, the, uh, the invitational that... <laughs> It was the, the invitational was nine, uh, nine Ollie rounds. one. Nine rounds of Swiss. I have to play against Merfolk a bunch in this one tournament. Well, Merfolk saying, is not good. You said name, name a time. I named a time. You know? uh, the Invitational Ollie one, it was good because that was the land. It was the Amulet Tron tournament, basically, and there was there was a uh, Merfolk in the top eight of that. that oh invitational. yeah, Richard uh, Richard something. I forgot. Uh, I forgot his name. Yeah, I can't recall it now. Adams, I think. No, I, I once you said the name, I would know exactly. Oh, okay. Can you stop? Can we play magic? 
<laughs> Come on, buddy. You re- are you ready? Yeah, my hands are great. good? Okay, I'm going to counter your first spell. 22. What is this nonsense? Turbo hard scales <laughs> ever game. Turbo Brady Fountain ever game. The joke is I have significantly fewer. Attack for problems. one. 21. Go. All right, sure. I will. Jerk face. Cool turn. Your turn. I will tormented voice discarding a mountain. Okay, it's not Phoenix. I'll take Attack two. it for two. I'm at 19. Pass Why are you turn. so mad? You're, you just sound so mad right now. 21. 21. So, so mad. Zeus, a lost but seeking. <laughs> oh, hold on. Yeah, you're actually right. Second land drop. We got a mouth this. Third land drop. We're going to get two more. 23. You're now dead. I'm dead. Not yet. I still don't, I don't have another land, and I cut the ghost quarter, and I was going to bring it, or I was going to cut the pact mitigation for the ghost quarter. Faithless looting. Ross, Stop, please. Ross convinced me. Pact mitigation <sighs> might be really good. Hold on, I might counter that. With what? With my pact of negation. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Discard two Arclight Phoenixes. Sure thing. It was, it was Richard Adams. I thought it, it was, was Richard Adams? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Questioning my knowledge hmm. of SCG tour history. Um, well, you also group team opens with single uh, solo player opens. Opens are opens, my friend. Well, you say that. Bolt but then Zuzo. there's also a differentiation between the two-day open and the one-day open. Bolt so, you. Uh, <laughs> you're 20. Not mad, though. Come back, get some phoenixes. Attack for 10. <laughs> this is a four? Yeah, I played Looting Bolt Bolt. You have to play three spells to return this. Nice. Okay. You're 10. Cool. If we don't draw a land, we're probably dead. Hey, you drew a land. Nice. Now what? Mm, this? Am I still dead? I think I'm still dead. So we're not well, playing. It. Oh, yeah, I can get this. You can get Vesuva and gain two more life. Mm, you have a looting, so I could get a bog if I really want to. So this is this. So I can just get another bounce land to bounce Radiant Fountain. Okay. This and this. We'll copy Radiant Fountain, and then Simic Chamber will bounce the Vesuva. So you're at 12. Or maybe that's just worse than bouncing the fountain so I can just cast fountain again next turn. Yeah. Okay. So I'm at 12. Your turn. And I, I don't know if this is right, but this deck plays a lot differently when you don't have the spike. Spike you. At 9. Battle Reveler. I'm going to pack them negation that, I believe. Well. Attack you for six. You're at three. Yep. Pass the turn. <laughs> Much more life can you gain? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Uh, pay for that pack. Pay, for, pay five for the pack. This chapter of a suit. It's a, it's a radiant bounce. That's fair. That's fair. Draw. I was really hoping you were going to miss that pack trigger. <laughs> Really, really hoping that that was going to happen. A lot of equity in that. Yes. It's going to be hard for you to cast a Hornet Queen here. No, you made me not bring in the Hornet Queen. It's in the sideboard because you made me leave in the sideboard. DT Lurch says, Todd, I was promised no bad mad- matchups. What is this? <laughs> Look, I was promised no bad matchups too. All right, uh, let's go to five. Going to attack. We only have one Vesuva, but we can Let's see. This and I guess I can get Bayloth. Yeah. No, not yet, but well, maybe next turn. No, I, what, I'm thinking, do you not have the pack? I don't I don't have a pack. Oh. Yeah, so it's going to be hard. I have, I have an explore after I bounce this to gain two more and play a Skura Tribe Scout and hope that that's enough. So I guess maybe I get this and Colony Garden to get a blocker for the Swift Spear in case you have a thing that kills Well, the, the Scouts can, can block the Swift Spear. Not if you kill it with a... I don't know, dude. I, I think you need to try to kill me. You're like still at 20, right? Yeah, I'm going to go to 14. 14. If you get... What do you got in hand? This is our face-up green now. cards. Okay. Oh, yeah, because you already knew about these. I had to um, pay for pack. My hand is a little stifled this this turn. Yeah, that's that's the problem. So Maybe I just get Sun Home and threaten it? 
Yeah, that's that was my thought. Okay, so we'll bounce the Suva so I can gain life. Is it, especially with the stirrings, like you have a ton of draws to any uh, to like drawing the any amulet. All right, so yeah, bounce of the Suva. You take six. You're at fourteen. Uh, I've already played a land in this, so I will. Yeah, the, the scout's not really going to do anything next turn. I guess I'll f float a, a red. red. These are on the battlefield. All right, so we'll play Vesuva, copy Radiant Fountain. Brings you to seven. Seven. And then so you can use the colorless to play this. Use the red, you mean? Or the red to play this. Go. So now you have a bunch of draws to an amulet to kill me next turn. Or just naturally drawing the sun home. I guess you don't have the second white mana. So you, you or not not the son of the, you know what I mean. Uh, uh flashback, what? faithless looting. Sure. Maybe I should have got bog instead of this because of the looting. Hmm. Burn spell, kill me. Burn spell, kill Scar me. Scar these two. Fiery temper you. Play land. Lava spike you. Yeah. You're one. Tech for six. Yeah. Get you. Okay, I'm at negative five. Deck is great. Okay. My turn? I just used all my mana on every single turn. I did relevant stuff all the time. Like, turn two is kind of mopey with the tormenting voice. Like so? I'll, I'll remove that. Okay. Untap. <laughs> How much life did you gain that game? I think uh, it was ten. Eight. Eight? eight. eight. There, draw. You ended at negative five. I don't need 33 damage on then turn end five. negative five. I'm currently at negative five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we play on. Yeah. Angel's <laughs> turn. <laughs> An amulet. I'll play that. Yeah. They're going to say Todd hasn't seen an agent stirrings. We need a rematch. <laughs> All right, I quit. Showed up a little late there. I guess this block... uh, the bit the bit doesn't work anymore. No, yeah, fourteen. Also, like this block wouldn't be enough. So yeah, going for the going for the lethal in the next turn while forcing me to find a burn spell, I think is easily your best best line. Mm. What you uh, what you should have done though was the the one thing I think you could have done better was bounce the radiant fountain again the second time instead of the Vesuva because then you would have gotten to pop the relic on your turn. So I can't draw. It. I can't flash back the looting. Well, I thought there was a chance... I ended up ripping faith, like, Fire and Temper anyway. I thought there was a chance that I, I might need to Vesuva something else. Yeah. Um, but but if you, if you had planned out the entire turn in advance and realized that, like, popping the Relic immediately just cuts me off of outs while you're setting up to kill me the next turn, man. that would have been best. But then I topped up the Burns Ball anyway. All right. Amulet Titan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not at 3 o'clock yet. We could play a pity game. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't. I hate this deck. I hate this deck so much. Also, I'm cutting this stupid Pact of Negation. Hold on. I'm putting the Hornet Queen in my Swap deck. decks no, and let, let Ross me, show you how yeah, it's done. Me, oh, shut up. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm, if I'm I just had Hornet dog. Queen, I would have won very easily. I would have. I would have won very easily. You just made me have Pact of Negation. I just let your stupid Battle Marveler resolve. <laughs> I just cast my freaking Hornet Queen, gain a bunch of life, and you can never kill me because oh I'm gaining God, a, a bunch over. of life every turn. Shut up, Nick. Why are you taking this side? <laughs> No one ever takes Ross's side. <laughs> That's how this town works. <laughs> There's a one horse town. Thank All you, right. Nick. Pity game, pity game. Uh, I'm gonna play super fast. Most broken combo deck in standard history. I think that has to be one of those. Like, I'm, I'm going to exclude the like bargain decks at, at, from 20 yeah. plus years ago, and I'm gonna. It's it's got to be Blue Red Dragonstorm. That deck was really good. I think it's pretty good. I can't, like, Heartbeat was pretty good. I'm not sure if it was better than Dragonstorm. Yeah, I think uh, you have no, to just rule out, like, the Academy decks. Yeah, Those are all like just that, that's mistakes. Just, okay. I got, we'll say Modern Plus, because there was yeah. a... Uh, be before Modern, I, I mean, I would even consider, like, Skull Clamp Affinity to be, like, pretty close to Combo-y. And, and that was... I mean, Skull Clamp's banned or whatever. But, um, I don't know. That's That's actually super tough. There haven't been a ton of like pure yeah. actual combo decks, right? Like you know, when Mind's Desire was legal, it wasn't. There wasn't a bunch of rituals. It wasn't very good. And it's in for like two months. There was because Early Harvest was legal in the core set until the fall, but no, like no major tournaments happened. You're right. You're right. And Heartbeat was legal then too, right? No, but, that was Kamigawa. No. Yeah, it was hmm. right before Heart. Uh, before Heartbeat. Okay. Uh, anywho, my hand. Is my hand great. has no lance. Cool. Yeah, Dragonstorm, I think, good answer. Yeah, there. Dragonstorm was good for a long time. Like, had Lotus Bloom, yeah. uh, like, peer through depths, a bunch of like, seething really powerful song. cards. Yeah, Seething Song. Yeah. So, like, very powerful for what it did. And then had a reasonable backup plan of just casting Bogarden Hellkite. Yeah. 
Sometimes they would just draw two of them, and you're like, yeah, I can't beat two while guarding all okay. case. That's true. Most of I did, especially with the charge lands, like just charging yeah. up a bunch of mana and the casting was pretty easy. Most affordable modern deck that can top eight a tournament. My vote goes to goblins. I think my vote goes to Dredge. It's not a very expensive deck. I mean, you got a lot of expensive lands. Oh, well, I guess they're not. I mean, if you have to play the fetch lands, it gets it gets a, little, a lot more expensive than goblins. My list only, yeah, but it's a lot better. Sure. The, the deck, if you look at it, the deck is can relatively we, cheap compared to the rest can, of the format. Can you draw a hand? This Arclight Red deck is also pretty cheap. You should draw a hand. Also, yeah. It's, After I'm done shuffling, this Todd. This is a pity game, and I don't feel very pity. <laughs> <laughs> Please make me well, feel better. Dude, I, have, I don't know what else you want from me. Land. 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 Would you? Would you? Okay, so I, I, have, a, I have a weird question for you. Okay, I'm just gonna put a land in my hand, and then we can get this game started. Sure, that's fine. I have a question. Um, I'm I'm trying to go through some permutations here. Yeah. Is there a turn two kill in this deck anymore? Yeah, two, there, it's a, it's very rare. You have to have two amulets, uh, and Azusa and multiple bounce lands. Is that what you okay. got over there? Because you, no, because I I right. think I might have one, but we'll we'll see. But no, you only need the one bounce line. So like you go like any untapped land amulet. The next turn, amulet. What about tribe scout? Does that change the math because it lets you you can play amulet on two and then do some stuff? No, because you need the second amulet. Okay. So so you go turn one amulet, then tap that same land amulet, and then play a bounce land, make four, play no, a zuzo. But if, you, if you have scout, you actually generate a weird mana somewhere in there too, right? Because you can you can use the first bounce land, bounce it, play amulet, tribe scout, put in a land, play the zusa, bounce, bounce, bounce. Right. But then you don't have enough mana left over to like go through the perm the mm, permutations. I don't believe you. We'll see. I'm going to try Hold it. Hold on, I'm going to scry. I'm uh, just, just going to try it. Huh. I think I I kind of need this card to do everything my I need to do by the first few turns. I mean, if so, you want to if you want to go over it, that's fine. I'm going to keep this on top and I'm actually going to make a weird line where I I don't I'm going to suspend a rift bolt on turn 1. And pass. All right, I'm gonna summon his pack so I don't have to play this game anymore. No. <laughs> turn two kill. Did you have the two amulets? No, I just okay. had the turn two kill myself. That okay. was <laughs> a turn two kill. Yeah. If if you go land amulet, then amulet bounce land, return the bounce land with itself four mana. Yeah. Play Zuzo with one floating. You get two more land drops. They each make four, so you have nine mana. Uh, and you play a Titan with three floating. You get Simic Growth Chamber, Teleri West. Make six more mana, go up to nine, bounce the Teleri West, transmute for a pact with six floating, get another Titan, play it, get Boris Garrison, Slayer Stronghold, give them both haste, uh, return the Slayer Stronghold, attack, get Vesuva and um, Sun Home, give one of them double strike and 24 of them on turn two. Cool. Easy peasy. Did, did you follow all that? It's going to be on the test. Hope you were taking notes back. All Good. Everybody at home. You just cast a bunch of things. Yeah. Just a thinking emoji in the right? chat. <laughs> Rift bolt this. Occur tribes go. Is it dead? Land. I have an amulet in my hand. Oh, we drew a land. You have gut shot or something? Or metamorphose? I have metamorphose. Yeah, we're doing Two it. red. Looting, looting. Get back four phoenix. Looting. That's awkward. Discard phoenix temper, three you. And then sure. get back to phoenix and three you again. All right. 14. You can go. This deck sucks. <laughs> I probably like should have held this, but then I couldn't stirrings the second time last turn, but I could have stirrings this turn. So last turn I could have just like played stirrings, found bounce land, played this and said go. But then I need to peel a land to be able to go Azusa. And I didn't even have amulet, so I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's in play. Play your Azusa. This is in your hand. Uh, no, it's not. It's not? Or, yeah, it is. Yeah. But I don't have an extra land to play, so I don't even... I'm going to do this. Whatever, dude. <laughs> this deck is... Mm. Red I mean, Dolph. And I, this is I, why I, you don't just pick up Amulet. <laughs> I don't... I mean... I agree. That deck someone is impossible Someone please show to me play. the line because, like, I could have taken a Boros Garrison off of this instead of this, and maybe I should have, but I still, yeah, I probably should have. Well, you can't see the line, can you, Russ? I can't see the line. Mm -hmm. um, I probably should have got Boros Garrison instead of this. 
But I still wouldn't have six next turn. Todd played no lands, so killing the Azusa is not a particular... This doesn't do anything. I, I need to... You haven't done anything that changed anything. I am just very dumb. Are you just going to have a Boris Garrison in play and more lands? Yeah, I'm going to have six mana. Yeah, Amulet is the most overrated card in the deck. Yeah, Amulet sucks. I don't know what I'm doing. It's now, now it's your turn. You're at 14 right now? This is way better. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Uh, Stress Spear Attack. I will block because it's already done his job. Till <laughs> go to eleven. <laughs> eleven. <laughs> need, need to drop you. <laughs> or no, need, need to drop yeah. you. So sorry. Yeah. That makes more sense. Uh, now I'm cooking with gas. You can go. <laughs> See now you should win. You're at eleven life. You're about to cast a titan. As long as you remember your pack trigger. I don't forget my pack triggers. Except in very important scenarios <laughs> where, I, where I do forget them. Okay, I will. Right, stop shuffling your deck. You're casting a Titan. <laughs> See, and that is the mark of a true amulet player. That was my favorite part yeah. of the uh, finals in Charlotte was... Uh, Oh, I forget his name. He's the judge at top eight of the Pro Tour. Um, Rob Carrington. Rob. He uh, he was there, and he was like, they were both like presenting and shuffling Rob mid when they shot Castellan. Rap. Castellan. And he was Rob just Carrington like, Carrington is someone I knew ten years ago. Yeah, he was just like, you guys can stop shuffling. We both know that you're going to be like, you can shuffle at the end of the turn, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, it's important to note that Todd cannot get Vesuva Radiant Fountain and copy the Radiant Fountain with Vesuva. You have to choose a land that's on the battlefield beforehand. Wisely gets the Bajuka Bog, which you should have done in game one, too. Would have... I asked you if you thought I should get... Mm. See? <laughs> hmm. now, this is why I make fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one... 13. Ever, no one ever advises me when I'm doing stupid things. They just let me miss yeah. my pack triggers. Right. This is the first I time I've ever... I didn't even catch until a turn uh, later. <laughs> two, if... Just a note, if you had bogged me in game one, I wouldn't have been able to cast the Reveler, so you wouldn't have had to Pact, and then I probably would have died. Hmm. Interesting. It's almost like I was playing my hand literally face up, and you uh, <laughs> did not advise me to do it as such, so you could have a fun turn. A fun turn. Well, I really, really, really hope I draw Faithless City. <laughs> because this is my hand. <laughs> huh. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I drop Faithless Lady off this Mana Morphos. Or even Tormenting Voice is pretty good, too. Tormenting Voice would be pretty good. Do you play Cathartic? Cathartic no. would be the nuts. Someone says you can't cast the Amulet because the Fountain came in to play tapped. Oh, you're right. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. For some reason, I was thinking it came in untapped. Look. Cast Mana Morphos. So... Yeah, yeah. So in my head, I was going to get a Bounce Land and bounce it and then play the land again and then play Amulet. But that just doesn't make any sense. And I'm stupid. Ooh, another one. Okay. Tormenting voice. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is big. So if you just fire temper this, you know. So I could fire temper the Titan and then attack with a four five. So essentially forcing through an extra point. Mm -hmm. And I'm not dead next turn. So that sounds good. So let's fire temper there and mush you. And if you trade, that's also good for me. Yeah, I'm going to go to six. Go to four, right? I gained two life. Oh, six. Yep. Fast turn. All right. So now we got to pay. You know what all card also would have been good off those Manamorphoses? Molten Rain. <laughs> Molten Rain would have been good. Haven't seen one of those yet. Am I getting 12? I don't know. Is that even good? No, I'm just going to... just going to... Do Just gonna gain four life. Let's get Gruel Turf Vesuva, copy Radiant Fountain, Bounce Radiant Fountain, Replay Radiant Fountain. Yeah, all that. So many. There's more Radiant Fountain triggers than I've ever seen in my life. Mm, well, I have another. I have a Bailoff in my hand, too, so I think I'm gonna. You should probably it. get another Growth Chamber instead of. Look, Radiant buddy. Fountain, right? I'm face up, Sing. so, you know. Just like the extra red mana isn't doing anything. You don't have. You didn't bring in red cards. That's what the grill turfs are mainly there for. So that, but the extra blue mana could help you transmute it to Larry West. Calm Garden for the Swift Spear. Okay, I like that. All right, so these on tap. Yep. 
Uh, trigger this, bounce this. I haven't played a land yet. That is correct. You go to 14. That is also correct. I will... I still would like to draw a faithless looting. Oh, Jesus. This. So you're 12 again? Yeah. Your turn. Yeah, Bayoth was really, really good. Forgot about that card. Um, and you have an amulet now, so... You're attacking me for 16 next turn. I don't know. I guess. At, le at least. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're the math guy. I'm the fumbling, bumbling idiot trying to play a deck that I don't play. I don't know why I didn't just get to play that deck. That deck seems super easy to play. <laughs> just cast all your spells. <laughs> you know? If you don't cast spells, you're not going to do anything. This one I have to, like, think. I have to, like, know everything in my deck. Through that. Every single good amulet player at home is just laughing at me. It's okay. I'm laughing at me, too. Eh, I might just be dead here, but that's what I can do. Swiss Spear, spike you to nine, attack you with the Phoenix. Go to six. Yeah. Pass the turn. I think I'm going to be exactly dead. If you have almost anything. What do you got? Oh, you have nothing. Tutor for... Yeah, you, you can't tutor for anything before... Next turn. So you have to pop the relic. Like pl play and pop the relic, tapping Teleri West and yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Because right now you don't have me dead. But there are plenty of draws that kill me. That one does. Uh so blue blue green. And you just get Slayer Stronghold. And then you slay a stronghold the primeval titan. Yeah. And then you attack. And then you get Sunhome and Vesuva, and copy the Boris Garrison, and Sunhome this, so this is 16, and my best blocks have me taking 14. So Vesuva copies Boris Garrison, they untap, probably just bounce the Teleri West, bounce the Radiant Fountain, whatever. And then have two red-white. So I feel like this is I really, believe Ross a wins 3-0. Yeah, because I don't even this, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Update well, the scoreboard accordingly for Ross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get a chalk this one for me, too. <laughs> yeah, 3 0 Ross. Ugh, another Swiss spear. Really need to draw a second looting. You should just changed both names to Ross. <laughs> just Ross wins 2 1 against Ross. <laughs> okay. Um, before we go to some questions, I just want to make sure we get in our nice, very, very organic and not at all forced plug for SCG Originals this weekend. So, Wait, SCG Regionals is this weekend? It is. Where can I find out more information about SCG Regionals? You can go to starcitygames.com slash content slash regionals. Might be slash SCG Regionals. Um, but either way, there's links on the website. Uh, and find there are 14 locations. Uh, when you go to the website and find the webpage for SCG Regionals, they'll show you all 14. You can search by your own location or just look at the map. Uh, first 200 people to register for an SCG Regionals event will get a play mat. It's pretty cool. It's specialized to your location. Yes. It says visit oh, yeah, yeah. X, where X is the city you're in, see the multiverse. And it's got a little goblin exploring the multiverse with his buddy. Uh, the top eight players will get a special version of that play mat with like, slightly different art, uh, which is really cool. Top eight gets a pin, which is great. There's plenty of money in the event. So a uh, good time. There's some points if you're still looking to qualify for the Invitational at SCG Con coming up in a few weeks. Yep. You can do it there. I believe top eight will automatically qualify mm -hmm. for the Invitational. But if, if you're just a few points shy, you can get them by top 64-ing uh, and all the way up. Uh, I think that's it for SCG Regionals. We hit the 14 locations. It's modern. Look, you're that's, the one doing the plug. I'm that's just... why we're playing modern today. Yeah. In case you didn't get that connection. Yeah. So A plus B equals money. <laughs> Give us money. <laughs> money, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. All uh, right. Well, that's going to do it for round two. We still got round three coming up. We're going to have, uh, I don't know, tell us. You are on Ironworks. That is, this is a Great. rematch of the top eight from Grand Prix Atlanta. This cool. is Peter Glogowski's Ironworks deck against Martin Juza's Hollow One deck. Juza was number one seed in the Swiss, but was felled in the quarterfinals. By... Right. Wow. Okay. Cool. I uh, hope you beat me. Honestly, I've got a, I've got a good sideboard. I got Leyline's Thought Seasons and Ancient Grudges. So the sideboard games are going to be great. Game one's going to be more of a race, but we'll get to that after our ten minute break and more questions from Nick Miller. So make sure you get those into the chat. Tag at SCG Tour. He'll take the best ones, ship them over here. We'll talk about basically anything, as frequent viewers will know. But right. we'll we'll Just be back in ten minutes.
and Todd will maybe I don't know <laughs> become a normal human being again. <laughs> you never know. 